Well, hey, Switch, welcome to the good life. And good life, I guess, is like a box of donuts. You like donuts? Who had donuts for breakfast today? No. No? No? What'd you have? Pop-Tarts this morning? That's nice. I had cereal. I had oatmeal. What'd you have? What'd you have? Your hands up. Go ahead. Yeah. Pancakes? Dude, that's so nice. What about you? You had toast? You had butter on it? Jelly on it? No jelly, just the butter. Two more, yeah. You had donuts, just like that? Just like that. One more, yes. You had, were you at his house? No, he was at mine. Oh, you're at his house. You spent the night, and you guys had donuts in the morning. You feel ready for Christmas? Can you believe it's like, what, three weeks away, yo? Two. Two weeks away. Thank you for the correction. Two, three weeks away. I'm curious, what do you think you're getting for Christmas? Stuff. Stuff. What kind of stuff? Yes. A hoverboard. A hoverboard? Like on the movie Back to the Future type of hoverboard? No. The, the wheels? Awful. Yeah. The awful yeah. ones are better. The awful ones are better? Off-road ones. I have not seen any of those. What else? What are you getting for Christmas? Yes. Oh, that's cool. So she said Legos, if you didn't hear, hear her, and she just saw a movie yesterday about when Jesus was born. I don't think it looked like the video you saw earlier. It was probably pretty cool. Okay, one more. One more who hasn't spoken yet. Yes, what do you think you're getting? A Fitbit? Really? You're going to you're gonna look at, do you have one yet? No? Fitbits are pretty cool. I have one of those Apple watches where I can track all the exercise and the walking and other kind of stuff. So if you want your Christmas list, you usually hear that somebody is making a list, and then what do they do? Check it twice, and they're going to find out if you're naughty or what? So today we're going to talk about being nice, specifically our words. We've been in this five-week series at Switch about living the good life. Ryan opened it up in week number one with what topic? What do you think? Do you remember that far back? What was it? I'm going to give you a clue. It's seek, not food. That was a nice thought. Wisdom, yes. Seek wisdom. Second week, it was to care about what? Others, your reputation. Care about your reputation. And then Stuart, if you remember, he talked about today like it matters. Jamie spoke last week. You should remember what she talked about last week. What was it? Patience. Patience. Exactly. Patience. Today, we're going to talk about choosing gentle words. Now, tell me who this guy is right here. Who's this guy? Thanos. From what? Avengers, yes. I just watched the end game. Can I tell you something about the end game? Listen up real close. Can I tell you something about the end game? Who, can, first, let me ask. Just raise your hand. Don't blurt it out. Just raise your hand. Who has not seen end game? Okay. Shall I say this about Thor or not if you saw end game? Will it be too much of a spoiler? No. No? Is it okay? Okay. I was shocked when I saw Thor. And how big he got. The dude got like, he's a, he's a superhero. The dude got like dad bod. What happened there with that? So let's go back. What is Thanos? What kind of words do you think he uses? Mean? What else? What kind of words? Inevitable? He said that, didn't he? It's inevitable. What other kind of words? What type of words that he used? I heard mean. I heard inevitable. What else? Yes. Real loud so I can hear you. What kind? Threatful. Threatful words. Okay, so we got it. Threatful, mean, inevitable. So would it be safe to say that his words were not gentle? His words were not kind? I mean, Thanos wanted to take over like the entire universe, right? And wipe out everything. And he was going to be the only one that existed. 
He was that type of guy. Well, what about this guy right here? Who's this? Bill Gates? Mr. Rogers. That's right, Mr. Rogers. Okay, so who's seen the movie, It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood? You don't care. The guy is so cool. Okay, so let me, let me talk here. Go ahead, put your hands down. Let me talk here. So Mr. Rogers, I think it's safe to say that he used very kind and gentle words throughout his whole life. You know, it's kind of cool to hear that you know who this guy is outside of Tom Hanks playing him in a movie because he's been off TV since 2001. That's way before you were even born. The guy wasn't on television. That was his last show, 2001. But yet, listen to this. Check out what he said in this episode right here. Did you ever have anybody hurt your feelings? Did anyone ever say something to you that made you feel really small and not very lovable? That feels awful, doesn't it? But isn't it nice when somebody helps you feel good about who you are? I mean, if you look for it, you'll probably find something fine inside of everybody. It's true, isn't it? I mean, people who say hurtful things, it stings to the very core. But yet here's Mr. Rogers, and let's talk about this guy. This guy made a career, made his very life more than just being on television. He made his very life about talking kind to people and being gentle to people and using those kind words. It's absolutely amazing. Take a look at this in Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 1. And it says this, A gentle answer deflects what? Anger. 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 But harsh words makes tempers fly. What does a gentle answer deflect? Anger. Anger. What does it deflect? Anger. Anger. Let me hear everybody. A gentle answer deflects what? Anger. Anger. I hope you know that. That the words that you speak are incredibly powerful. Think about that bully in school. Who, who has come up against a bully in school? Anybody? Stings when they speak to you, doesn't it? Those harmful things that are told to you that a bully will say. But you know what I've learned? And it took me a long time to learn this about somebody who speaks hurtful things to other people. And it's this phrase. Hurt people hurt people. Anybody ever hear that? Hurt people hurt people, meaning that somebody who has been hurt themselves somebody who has walked through life and is just completely horrible for them because they don't know anything else, they hurt other people. So here's what you can try to do, and that is use a gentle word for these folks. Check this out. And this is right in your handout. And I'm sorry for the feedback. I think that's me talking too loud. So fill this out. If you go to the next slide, your words have power. Your words have power. Let, let's say, let's liken your words to hanging a picture on a wall. Have you ever done that? Yes. Hang a picture on the wall? So to hang a picture on the wall, you need, uh, let's say your words are like a hammer. Is this a hammer? Okay. And with your words that you say out of your mouth, you're going to nail them with what? A nail. What else do I need? I need a picture. Okay, so I think I've got a picture right back here. And now I need a piece of drywall. Anybody have drywall with them? No? You have drywall? I'll tell you what, I got a piece of drywall here. I need two male volunteers who are small group leaders. So small group leader, come on up. I need one more. Taylor! Come on, Taylor! You are the next contestant on The Price is Right. Okay, so all I need you gentlemen to do is hold one hand up and one down here, just to give me some reinforcement. You don't want your hand. How about we do it like this? How about you're like this. Keep it down on the ground. 
and just hold it back and reinforce it like this because I'm going to be nailing here. I'm going to nail in Taylor's hand. No, I'm not. I'm sorry. Did I scare you? She like, did you hear that? She went, <gasps> she was like, okay, here's your words. Here's the words coming out of your mouth. And we're just going to put it right uh, in my center. No, here. Can we pretend this is center? Thank you. Okay. So I'm just going to say my words. I'm going to nail it in really nice and then put the picture up. Let me see if you can see the picture. How do you like the, the nail-in job? With my, no. I know. But it's the best I can do. And we're going to put the picture right up there. How's that? Is it, is it crooked? It's perfect. Can you help me straighten this out? Okay, you straighten it out. Come on up. Yes. Okay. Okay, that's nice. What do you say? Give her a big hand for straightening that out. Did a good job. Now, let's demonstrate using not gentle words, but harsh words. Things that would really pierce and sting. So all I'm going to do is, hold it back, guys. You ready? All I'm going to do is, you're right, I should. I'll take this off. No, I'm not going to hit it at somebody's picture, dude. Okay, so here we go. You ready? These are my words. This is the words coming out of my mouth, but they're going to be harsh and angry words. Are you ready? Here we go. Oh, I missed. I got. Did you see that? These are the harsh and terrible words that we can say to people. And somebody just said, I'm ruining Switch. Thank you, gentlemen. So let's look. Okay. Let's go ahead and settle down just a moment. I know that was a ton of fun. But look, look at the harsh words and what they have done. Can I tell you, the nail is completely gone. So the harsh word pierced through something. Is it there? Okay, good. There's debris everywhere. There's stuff that's way up on this stage, all the way back here behind the display. Would you say that harsh words do a lot more damage than what you think they do? Think about how powerful. Let's go back to that. Think about, what did we just write down? Your words have power. Now, if you don't have your Bible, and I think a lot of people already got it unless you came in when the worship music was going, but go ahead and get your Bible out, if you would. And we're going to open up right now to James chapter 3. James chapter 3. Now, if you have this Bible, it's 736, if you have this one, this blue one. If you have the other blue and the yellow one, it's page 937. We're going to use our Bibles today. 937. No swiping, nothing like that because we're not using our phones. But just open it right up there. I see a couple that are going to get it. So in the blue and yellow Bible, it looks like this. It's 931. And in this Bible, it's 736. James chapter 3. If you have it, don't tell me. Just raise your hand. I want to see if there's a lot of people that already got there. I'll give you one more minute. Okay. James chapter 3. It's up there if you don't remember. James chapter 3. And we're going to start at verse 4. And to help me, when I read, I get distracted when people are talking. So if you could, just help me out here. Okay, here we go. James chapter 3. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even through the winds are strong. And in the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. There's power in our words, right? But a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. Verse 6, and among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. 
and the whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set the whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish. Not one can tame the tongue. It is relentless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And the blessing and cursing comes pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble up with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No, and you cannot draw fresh water from a salty spring. If you are wise and understand God's ways and prove it by living an honorable life, uh, doing good, works with humility, that comes from wisdom. Your words have so much power. Now, let's talk about your relationships, the ones that you have like with your parents and your siblings, your brother or sister, your grandparents, those who are in school. Your words, this is in your fill out, your words can have a huge impact on your relationships, a huge impact. I mean, just think about your relationship and the words that you say to each other with your parents. I mean, if they ask you to do something, how do you really respond with your words? Is it really harsh and, no, I'm not going to do that, or do you actually say something that's nice? You'll blow them away if you do. Think about your grandparents, your brother, your teacher, your coach, your friends, your classmates, your neighbors, the words that you use with them. I want to tell you about Mrs. Pat. Miss Pat works at the Atlanta airport, and she's in one of the terminals. <laughs> and Miss Pat is known for the kind things that she says. She just says kind things to everybody who comes into that little store that she works at at one of the terminals in the Atlanta airport. Now, you know one of those stores that you go to that have like the magazines and the water and the gifts if you forget to get a gift for somebody? That, that kind of store is where she works in one of the terminals, and there's a bunch of them in Atlanta. There are people who travel on a regular basis that know Miss Pat and that are encouraged by Miss Pat because of what she says. Believe it or not, they reroute their travel. They make sure that if they're going to Tampa, Florida, that their hub or their layover is in Atlanta so that they can get on the bus or the train that's down below, go to that terminal, and just see Miss Pat because Miss Pat is going to say something nice to them. She is known for this. She's been there for years. If you ever go, say hi to Miss Pat for me because she is just a rock star. I mean, she, remi she reminds me of Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers was known for what? Being so kind? He loved people. He said nice things. Miss Pat is the same exact way. So your words have a huge impact on your relationships. I mean, just think about it. When you're at school, that bully says whatever that bully says to you. When you use kind words, it makes such a difference. Now, let's open up your Bible. Go over, if you're still to James, it's just a couple of pages over to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. In this one Bible, it's 936. In this one, it's 739. 1 Peter chapter 3. Now, if you know the Gospels, you know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, when you see Peter in the Gospels, he's pretty much known for saying whatever comes off the top of his mind. I mean, he would, he would say good things. He would say things that just really hit your heart. He would just, whatever. The guy was a wild card. He would come out and just say whatever. But it looks like he learned some things. So let's go up to verse 4, where it says, You should clothe yourselves instead with a beauty that comes from within, unfading beauty, a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. Now, Peter is talking to wives at this point, but I think that when you take a look at this, it really applies to you and me. And while he's talking about the outward appearance, the way that we should present ourselves was with a gentle and kind spirit, just like the words that we say. Go down to verse 9, and here's where we're going to pick it up in verse 9. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. This is what God has called you to do. He will grant you his blessing. For scriptures say... 
if you want to enjoy life, the good life, right? If you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. His ears are open to their prayers, but the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. And verse 13, now who will want to harm you if you are eager to do good? Who's going to harm you if you are eager to do good? You see, write this down, a gentle answer is always better than than revenge. A gentle answer is always better than revenge. I mean, the Bible is just so clear in that. I mean, think about the next time somebody says something that's really harmful to you. How are you going to react to that person? How is God going to help you? Did you say punch them in the face? Dude, (laughs) no, don't punch them in the face. Say something kind and gentle to them. And watch what is going to happen. A gentle answer is always better than revenge. Let's flip over to Romans. This is the last scripture that we're going to look at. I know we're flipping around a lot, but let's go over to Romans chapter 12, and that'll be verse 18 and 20. Romans chapter 12, 18 and 20. This one, it's 866, 682. 866, 682. Romans chapter 12. I'll give you a moment to get there as you turn. I hear a lot of pages that are flipping. That's awesome. If you're like, dude, where is that? Small group leader that's close to you can help you get there. Most of us there already? Give you about 15 more seconds. Okay, here's what it says. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Did you hear that? Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave the righteous anger of God. For for the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemy are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Do not let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing what? Doing good. That's living the good life. I challenge you next time somebody says something harsh, repay them with kindness. Repay them with gentle words. Which brings us to our switch question, and it's this. And really think about this. What's one thing that makes choosing gentle words difficult for me? Personalize it. What's one thing that makes choosing gentle words difficult for me? You probably know what that one thing is. But, I heard anger. But, ask God to help you overcome that. Because he will. I mean, we learned a couple of weeks ago about wisdom, right? And if we lack wisdom, seek God who gives generously. He'll give you that wisdom that you need. He will give you that answer, and he will help you overcome that. He'll help you overcome that. So what's one thing that makes choosing gentle words difficult for me? Let's go ahead and pray. God, you're so good. Thank you as we wrap up this series of living the good life, that we're learning how to have great character, to seek wisdom, to to have patience, to take today as today because today matters, and to choose gentle words because it is a choice we know how we can respond to people and father i think we're learning today that when we respond with gentle and kind words that that glorify who you are that makes a difference in people's lives because our words are so powerful and they make a huge impact in relationships and we don't have to use our words for revenge but instead to repay evil with goodness so we repay it with good and living the good life Father, we love you, and we thank you for who you are and how you are going to use us in our life to impact somebody for Jesus. It's in your name that we pray, and everybody said, Amen. Okay, see you in small group.